What did I see in Rio de Janeiro when Pope Francis was down there? Um, I saw Father John Paul have his wallet stolen and crowd right out of his habit. He did it, reached into his habit, took it out of his pocket, and his habit, he didn't even know that the crowds were so intense. Uh, aside from that, he handled it real well. Uh, I saw a Pope who several times stopped the Popeville, climbed out of the back, and went to the people in the streets. Uh, a couple times they handed him the mate tea, which is Argentinian. We try to taste it down there. Pretty strong stuff. It's like an extremely strong coffee. Um, and Father Mark drank it. I did it to sip it, and that was it. Um, he took this from the crowd. He was driving the Swiss guards nuts, the Secret Service, because they couldn't keep up with his schedule and with his willingness to just reach out to the people. I saw that and then heard him say, go into the streets. I want you to make a mess of things. And he did use the term, and it really shook some people up. But what he meant was, shake up the world. I would rather have a church that's out there making some mistakes and getting bloodied a little bit rather than turning in on itself. So not only did he say it, I saw him really reach out and do it. And we were very moved being in the streets with him. He got with about 10 feet of us as he went by on two occasions and waved to us. And he specifically said, I like life on the rock. He did say that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him say it, and I saw him do it. That would be my answer. He, he says go into the streets, and then he did it. And uh, I just I think he's, he's really setting a good tone for us right now. But my question is, I'm trying to struggle with, with that question of do I go out, or do I stay in the tight niche and just try to survive? You know, I've got three little kids, and I'm, I'm worried about losing them. I'm one of 11, and most of my brothers and sisters, they're not just falling away from the church. They're, they're about atheists. Okay. I've seen this happen. You know, I'm homeschooling my kids and stuff. And I get accused of this, you know. Don't shelter your family. You know, go out into the world. And I'm like, I'm scared. And maybe I need to have courage, but i got to be wise, too. I'm just wondering how to balance all that. Yeah, and for, for those of you who know a little bit of my story, uh, when, when I came home, Jimmy Swire at Bible College to tell my family that I was about to become Catholic. <laughs> I mean, all heaven broke loose. <laughs> my brother thought I was demon possessed, you know, and had friends wanted to cast demons out of me as well as family members. By the way, the, the one that wanted to cast demons out of me is now a Catholic priest. I just thought you might have been. <laughs> but, but you know, men, wherever you are, face difficult situations as our brother Doug, I thought, masterfully pointed out just now. But we have got to be strong and we've got to step up and we do have to step out. And this is why, and I encourage you, brother, I don't know all the details of your situation, but I know this. 1 John 4, 4 tells me, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, take this home with you. God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, timos in Greek, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Through the sacraments of initiation, we have received power from on high to be able to overcome. I think fear is from the enemy. The devil loves to tell you what you can't do. You can't reach that family member. You can't do that. And I'm going to tell you, brother, I felt that with my father. You imagine this. My father, a, a fighter from way back, broke his nose seven times. My dad actually had a fake piece of uh, car on chair. It's not real. He hit it in the place. He can take his nose and move it over like this. <laughs> That's my dad. My dad's cut his nails. When we were kids, all dad had to do is reach for his belt, and we were angels, you know. <laughs> but my, my dad put his finger in my face, and he, after my mother converted, my brother Terry converted, he was angry. And he put his finger in my face and he said, Son, let me tell you something. I will never be Catholic. And I don't want that Catholic stuff in my house. Now, what do you do then? All right? Well, you know what we did? We stood our ground. We shared. And if Dad, Dad knew, if you say something against the Catholic faith, we're going to respond. And it took five years, but Dad became the most dramatic con convert that I've ever seen in my life. He converted... 
was a terrible. So why do I say this? Because folks, we have got to take this, this beautiful image that we have from our Holy Father. Get rid of the fear and begin to step out. Do what Doug was talking about with St. Peter. Step out of the boat and it is amazing when you just step out what God does. You, you will think you screwed up. I, I can't tell you how many times. People say, Tim, you brought your whole family to the faith. How did you do it? I say, I don't know. Because I screwed up every way you can. <laughs> but I love my family and I stepped out and God used even the errors. God will, will by His grace, overcome a multitude of errors if we're loving. So what we got to do, my brother, is just love them. And if you are loving them, it's going to be exactly what Doug talked about. Fire shut up in your bones. You just can't help it. You say it. And then God will bless it and God will do the work. And it's such a wonderful thing when you see. Because I, I look back at my brother, who's now Father Terry. I can't believe it. Uh, I used to call him Knucklehead. Now i got to call him Father Knucklehead. <laughs> but we look back on, on what all happened. And both of us will say the same thing. It is pure grace. When we get a hold of that, it's not your ability, it's not my ability. You think you can, hey, you can come up with all sorts of things. I can't do this, I can't do this. But what we have to start doing is speaking what God says in Philippians 4.13. I can, right? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I will step out in faith and in love, and I'll do my part. I'm going to study, I'm going to learn as best I can so that I can reach out well. But ultimately, we've just got to do it. Step out and watch the salvation of our God. Thank you. Great answer. Great answer. Uh, brothers, we all love our priests. We know that they fight battles that we probably can't even imagine that they have to fight. But we tend to love them from a bit of a distance. Father, what can we do to support you and your other priests? Good question. You know, I gave a talk a while back on the priesthood, and the title of it is uh, The Priest is a Marked Man. And you got to understand um, what it's like to be a priest in this day and age. Um, we had a professor in seminary who used to say that being a priest today is like trying to be a traffic cop at the Indianapolis 500. <laughs> right? The world tells us to get out of the way or get run over. Uh, the priest is a marked man, not just because of that indelible character on his soul by virtue of his procession of the sacrament of holy order, but because the priest will always be the special target of the devil's malice. The priest is under tremendous temptation in this day and age. And you know, the best thing that you all can do for us is to pray for us. Pray for us. A kind word, a word of support goes a long way. Just know you're thinking of us and that you care about us. Um, but the best thing you can do is to, to pray for us. Remember, always pray for your priests. Uh, your priests are really under tremendous pressures in so many ways, so many ways to, to mention, but uh, we need to know that you are with us and that you support us. These guys are my heroes. And so when they see priests at dinner and they see Dad, oh my gosh, Superman, and look how he loves his priest and he looks up to Dad looks up to Yeah. Invite your pastor over to the house, your associate pastor, priest friends. It's a wonderful thing for your children to see that, to get used to it. And, and you know, I would imagine, Father, a priest is not going to turn in a free meal either. I mean, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> there may be a few who will, but I've never had one yet turn in a free meal at the house. And, you know, I, I think what you're doing there is you're showing support and love for for the priest at the same time, you're instilling something deep in your children, and that starts to breed a love and perhaps gives birth to vocations in, in your young boy's life. I'll share this one little story. My, my son, Timmy, uh, when he was not quite three years old, during Mass, my, my 
wife goes to David and has sometimes a, a, a spark of the rosary in, in St. David's all the time in parish. The parish priest is very, very reverent, very holy liturgy. And so my wife was praying, and usually Timmy would have his arms around her neck. And she's praying, it's the Sanctus, she's on her knees praying. And she didn't even realize that there's no little arms around her neck. She had this little look. Timmy had got out of the pew and walked right up into the sanctuary. And, and my, my wife sees Timmy's up there, and they were, were approaching now the, the words of institution. And Timmy's like this. <laughs> Almost three years old. And my wife didn't know what to do. Father goes on with the Mass, of course. And then my wife kind of sheepishly, after the consecration, goes up. And Father Louis said, look, I, I think we might have a vocation here. He's already trying to kind of celebrate with me. <laughs> and you know, look, it's just that I, I think part of that may well be that our kids just know priests. And they feel so, you know, Timmy absolutely loves Father Louis. There's one priest where they'll, they'll follow him. But you know what that comes and, and it shocked us, though. You know, oh my gosh. And I can tell you more stories like that. You know, that, I, I do think, I, I saw as a Protestant much more camaraderie and love between the pastor and the congregation. Our, our pastor was part of our family when I was Protestant. I, and, you know, I think that's something good that I bring with me as a Catholic. I say, man, come on, Father, come on over to the house. And Ed was this guy, you know, as harmless as could be, you know, this long ponytail. He'd walk up and he'd see priests different places. He'd go over and talk to him. And we're in the airport in Boston, I think. Get ready to leave, and, and he went over and talked to his priest, and he just gave him a little card. It's Jesus, the sweetest name ever spoken. And it had our address on it. And then he said something to the priest and left, came back. We got a plan for the home. A few weeks later, I get, a, I get a letter, and it's from the priest. And he says, I just want to tell you that I was having a, a difficult day. And this young man from your ministry came over and talked to me, gave you this card. He explained the card. And he said, and then he said to me, thank you for being a priest. He said, I cannot tell you what that did for me that day to have someone out of the blue thank you for being a priest. We talk about that when soldiers, you know, in their service to our country, especially in light of the war on terrorism, and we should be always, always thanking those who commit so much of their lives for our defense and our freedom, but also the spiritual defense and the spiritual freedoms that we have because of God working through the person of Christ, the person of Christ, the priest. So I, that's something that I've tried to do is get into that habit of just remembering, never forget it. These men make an amazing sacrifice. And as Father mentioned, they are armed. The devil does hate them. He knows their position. And so we must, on a natural level as well as a supernatural level, encourage and support. Don't ever be afraid to say to priest, Father, thank you very much for being a priest. And then without you, we don't, we don't have Eucharist. We don't have absolution. So, Father Casey, thank you for being a priest. Thank you. Hey guys, how's everybody doing tonight? Yeah. Thank you guys for coming out for a show of hands. Raise your hand if this is the first time you've been to one of our conferences. Wow. Thanks guys, come on out. Okay. Let's see a show of hands again. Who just signed up for tonight and was thinking about tomorrow? Just a couple. Great, so we don't have that many registrations to worry about. But if you just came out tonight, did not register for tomorrow, you can go online and register. You can go outside and see Mr. Bob standing right over there uh, at the exit there. He's waving his hands, and he'll get you registered for tomorrow. Uh, great things coming up for tomorrow, as you guys have kind of already heard a preview. I uh, want to share something with you. <clears throat> Chirp, Christ renews his parents, probably seven years ago, was asked by my priest six times. Well, actually, I was asked by friends before my priest asked me. Six times, Joey, would you like to go to church? Oh, no, I'm busy. I can't go. i got something going on. Got out of that one. Second year, same thing. Third year, same thing. Fourth year, same thing. Fifth year, same thing. Sixth year, still had an excuse. Seventh year, up at my, my parish, St. Gabriel's. My priest asked me, he said, Joey, he goes, have you thought about going to church this weekend? 
I said, Father, I've been thinking about it for six years. <laughs> he goes, well, why don't you go home and pray about it? I went home and I prayed about it. And all of a sudden, my weekend just came open. And I attended that church session. And that was when I had my fourth hour, when I truly saw Christ in the Eucharist. I truly understood what that meant. Because I was a check-in, check-out, and I was a butt Catholic before that, when I would follow the rules, and but I wouldn't do this. And when I saw that, and I saw Christ there, I'm like, Lord, how could I not have seen that earlier? How could I not have known and seen that earlier? So that's when it happened to me. And I'm hoping this weekend, if you guys have not seen that, you will see that this weekend. And then you will give your life over to God. So for tomorrow, uh, lots of things going on. We've got the three speeches coming up. We've got the adoration, the reconciliation. We've got the lunch. When you get in tomorrow, you're going to come in. If you're already registered, still check in tomorrow. You're going to get a packet. If you haven't already got your t-shirt, you'll get your t-shirt. Pick that up. Inside your packet, there are going to be lots of things. And I'll cover some of that tomorrow about you know, the contents of the packet. There's going to be a little three by five card in there. And on that card, we're going to ask you to do two things. One is put a question on one side of that card that you might want one of these gentlemen up here to, to ask. And number two is on the other side of that card is write down a special prayer for somebody in your life. And we're going to put all those up here. We're going to bless those. And then we'll pull some of those out for questions. And then all those prayers will be blessed uh, at our Mass tomorrow. So think about something tonight, uh, one, to ask a question, uh, two, and uh, just a, a prayer for somebody. Um, so what do you guys think about tonight? Okay, we, we started this three years ago, and we were about to spin this off as a nonprofit. And of course, we need men like you who can step up and do like we've been tr trying to do to get men to, to step up and be a part of this. It's really energizing. And when you really come to know your faith, it's just so awesome. I get up in the morning, I, I, I listen to 9, 10 a.m., EWTN radio, it feeds through that. I, I hear the Holy Mass and I hear these guys on the radio. And I'm standing here thinking, oh my gosh, here I am. These guys on the radio, am I in heaven, Lord? Oh my gosh. <laughs> It's just so awesome, and if you listen to the words... I wish my mother-in-law felt that way. <laughs> <laughs> if, you li <laughs> if you listen to the words that's coming through that channel, uh, it's, uh, it's awesome. I even get to the point where I've got my radio on in the bathroom when I'm shaving the shower. I flip it over to my, my, my Bluetooth and get it on my phone while I'm walking out the car. So when I get back to the car, I turn it back on the radio so I don't miss anything. Because the more you listen, the more you learn. The more you listen, the more you learn. And man, have I not learned a ton of stuff that I did not know. I thought I was Catholic. I'm like, oh my gosh, I did not really know that I was not truly Catholic. Because I didn't know these things. Like, Lord, please forgive me. Go to confession be forgiven for those things. So that's what I want to share with you guys. So hopefully tomorrow you guys come back. And I think we're going to hopefully have a couple more hundred people here. But some people didn't register for tonight. They'll be out here tomorrow. We're going to have uh, the registration in the morning at 7 o'clock. There's a little bit of a continental breakfast and coffee and stuff uh, right in that little room where you got your hamburgers tonight. Go ahead and move out to the, uh, the little corral area out there. Enjoy that. And when you hear the bells ring or hear people hollering, get everybody in here so we can get started. We've got a pretty packed day tomorrow. We've got to try to be on time. And I uh, want to share all this great knowledge and blessings that we have on the stage here and the blessings that you guys are here with us. So thank you very much. If we could, we'll uh, close in prayer. And Father, if I could ask you for a final blessing after this prayer. In the name of the Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Thank you, Father, for bringing us together to bring praise, honor, and worship to you. We ask for your mercy and forgiveness for our sins. We ask that you help us open our hearts to receive your grace and to help us to become your humble servants. We, as we strive to become True believers growing in our love for you, our love for Jesus, and our love for one another. May we share the good news and be the good news to everyone we encounter. Please help us to have the strength and the courage to do your will. And may we honor, love, and serve you with our attitudes and our actions all the days of our lives. As we give all the glory and honor to you, we ask these through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.
Amen. We will see you in the morning.